and welcome to the Zadara video series. This module answers the question, what is a VPSA and why would I need one for my Amazon cloud? Today, there's a lot of things going on. There's a sea change of events today with customers. They want a better way. I hear many customers quoted, I like my storage array. I like what it does for me. It's fast, it's reliable, it's configurable. But what I really want to see is the industry change into more of a, an operating expense model. I want to get, get away from the big capex, capex expenses. This multi-year planning cycles, the inability to really forecast the future, I know I can get it wrong. I know I'm going to overbuy, buy the wrong devices and things like that. Overpurchasing to improve cost and scalability. My low utilization rates, typically at around 30%. Day-to-day -day maintenance, IT costs are high, painful migration. These are the challenges that customers have every year. What we do is we take our software-defined storage, which I'll talk about in just a moment, and we, and we basically make that storage available to the Amazon cloud. You can see that we're, we're uh, connected into an awful lot of uh, infrastructures across the country and across the world. Well, basically, we're going to focus on Amazon today. Uh, we also have an on-prem model, uh, which will come out in a future module. So when we set out to design a VPSA, Virtual Private Storage Array, we wanted to basically create an enterprise storage device. All the features that you see on the left, the, the ability to select drive and RAID, uh, be able to select cache amounts, be able to um, uh, create block and file, uh, high availability, and so on. But we wanted to do this 100% as a service, operating expense, elastic in all directions, easily modifiable. The concept of multi-tenancy is important, but we want to give the customer single tenant experience so they basically have their own private virtual array. Uh, no upfront cost, of course, and, and only a one hour commit. So if we can take the enterprise storage and add to it this as a service notion, then I think we're going to basically be able to solve those customer challenges that they had up front. Now, when you look at enterprise storage features, you have to be looking at all the various things that, that really determine what an enterprise storage device looks like. And there's the list, uh, just quickly, it's NFS and SIFs and iSCSI connection points, uh, file and block storage, uh, large volume sizes, uh, at rest and in-flight encryption, cluster support, thin provision volumes, uh, all these various things that customers are really in tune with when it comes to uh, enterprise storage. Also, you can't talk about enterprise storage without talking at least about snapshots and clones, mirroring, and online migrations. I think we have some of the best tools here in the industry, especially for the cloud. So what is a VPSA? It's really a software-defined storage device that's made of standard components. Uh, x86 servers, we use uh, uh, commercially graded SSD, SAS, and SATA drives. We have a 40 gigabit uh, switching mechanism and switches. <clears throat> And we basically take our secret sauce, which is OpenStack, Ubuntu, and KVM, to make this all look like a storage device. The things that I want you to focus on in, in the next couple of slides is cords, storage nodes, and drives. Those basically three components make up what a VPSA is all about. So when I go to our e-commerce page, <clears throat> I'll select Amazon. I'll select the uh, region that I'm in. In this case, I'm selecting Virginia 1. And I'm going to select the type of engine I want. Uh, the engines range from baby, basic, boost, blast, blazing, and blazing plus. Uh, and the, basically, those engines will determine how many drives you can support and how many IOPS you're going to receive. Uh, in this also case, I'm selecting four of the five terabyte drives, uh, giving me a 10 terabyte net after I put this into a RAID 1 configuration. You can see the cost on this is based on the hour, $1.21 per hour. As soon as I hit the submit button, uh, OpenStack then goes to work and creates your personal private storage array. It creates an active and a standby uh, RAID engine, if you will, or RAID controller. And it also uh, takes those four drives that we selected and puts those under your VPSA. So these are not shared storage drives. These are your drives uh, to be used with how you wish. A uh, customer right behind there comes in and creates a, uh, uh, their VPSA. Uh, department B or, or maybe a new customer and they've selected basic so now they can have up to 10 drives and OpenStack again creates the active and standby uh, RAID controllers for this particular customer. We're then going to take those VPSAs and we're going to connect them into the Amazon infrastructure and in this case in Virginia and we're going to connect those into a availability zone one and availability zone two and so forth. Maybe they want to do clustering. Maybe they want to do NFS shares or SIFs or things like that. So it's very simple using the Direct Connect product from Amazon. 
So when I look at the, uh, the sea change of events that's going on with customers today, uh, I want to basically just review of, of whether we've been able to solve some of the things that are going on. Uh, we've, we, the, the capital expense has gone away. It's now all operating expense. They don't have to worry about multi-planning cycles. Uh, they can't get it wrong. Uh, basically, they're not going to overbuy or buy the wrong devices. We'll just simply swap those out. Overpurchasing to improve cost and scalability is gone. Uh, they're going to basically uh, be able to, to purchase exactly what they need when they need it. Uh, the day-to-day -day maintenance and the migration tasks, those are going to be handled by Zadara Storage. So basically, thank you for joining this particular module here. There will be other modules coming out as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining this module today.